thank you all for joining. Um, I'll share my presentation. And today, as some of you might have uh, seen, um, I changed the topic from 10 uh, mistakes to most common mistakes because uh, yeah, limited amount of time. And uh, the motivation actually for the talk was that we had high tech gründer for i'll come to what we what we do close uh, closer in a second we see a lot of interesting uh, ideas and good teams uh, starting and founding companies and uh, from time to time uh, unfortunately even in the early stage we cannot invest anymore because uh, major mistakes have been done and that's of course a pity for for us and for you if you are like starting a company and raise want to raise venture capital so um i decided to write down the most common mistakes so that you don't have to do them again okay so very short introduction heite gründer fonds hgf is one of europe's most active seed investors um we mainly invest in germany as you can also see um in this uh, picture and um, we are investing out of our third fund um, we have a lot of different limited partners, the logos you can see here, and that's a full slide. I only want to point out uh, two topics. First of all, we can invest into startups that are up to three years old. Uh, and second, our focus is on Germany um, or companies that on their end have a strategic focus in Germany. So that's uh, one of our main investment criteria. Um, I just wanted to point that out because I know that there's a large international uh, community participating at uh, Startup Night. And now we already jump into the topic. Um, as I said, um, before the first fundraising, so we usually invest in the first institutional financing round, often they're business angels, accelerators, uh, other public funding programs that uh, have already gone into the company, but we usually are the first uh, institutional investor. Um, and we see different topics that are either difficult to heal or impossible to heal in a few companies. And actually, I want to start with the one that uh, I see the most recently and also before and that are, is the most difficult to heal. That is a shareholder structure that is already uh, not uh, sustainable, how I call it anymore. Um, on the right, you see a cap table um, with very different shareholders. I, of course, over-exaggerated. Usually that's not the case, but just to give you an idea what could happen uh, when you start a company. So uh, you are two founders um, or, or you were three founders. One founder left the company. Um, so you have 25% left for the two, one founder that is operationally active, 25 for the second. And then you have a business angel that gave you first uh, money when you started your company. Then you have a software agency that uh, developed software for you. And as you couldn't pay uh, with, uh, yeah, as you couldn't pay them, you gave them equity. Then there, as I said, it's a former founder. Then there's even maybe a wife of a founder and an advisor that you all gave equity to. And so, as I said, it's exaggerated, but in the end, um, the operational founders only have 50% pre-seed left in that cap table. And that is something we see from time to time, especially, for example, if you um, spun out of a uh, corporate that wanted to have a larger share, or as if you started an adventure builder that had a larger, have, has a larger share. And actually, that's not a cap table that we would invest any more in truth. So usually uh, what we want to see or what we would like to see, it's not always possible. What we'd like to see is that after the first, uh, after the second financing round, the Series A financing round, that the operational founders still have 50% of the equity. And I know it's, uh, of course, easier in the early stage to pay um, with equity or give away equity because you have not that much substance in your company but I would advise it to be very selective with that and uh, think about uh, yeah the next financing rounds to come and the, your dilution as a founder. By the way, one topic, if you have any questions, there's a chat. So please feel free to post the questions in the chat. Um, I try to limit my presentation to 15, 20 minutes, and then we have some time left to go through the questions. Second mistake, as our name suggests, Hightech Gründerfonds, we invest into high-tech companies and that's of course a very broad definition but what we try uh, to find is uh, product innovation technical innovation and usually that means that there's some intellectual property 
uh, that there was some intellectual property already uh, developed until the seed financing round. It might be through a university context in a research organization. It might be that you just started a company and hired someone to help you with the development freelancers. It's always very important to have a clear idea and have a clear structure on how to get, how to have the intellectual property in your company. For example, for research organizations, that's a huge topic. If you want to spin out a startup from a research institution, there's a lot of negotiation going on on how to transfer the intellectual property from the research organization where it was developed into your company. So make sure you have that all that set before the first uh, seed financing round because it will get complicated as soon as there's a larger amount of money involved, a large investment, as soon as there's something to negotiate about. So if you are just a two or three founder team and there's an IP that is not really needed, it's much easier to go into negotiations with universities research organizations and so on as after a financing round when the valuation has risen up and when there's an investment and money that can you know, can be distributed. So that's very important. And for example, one uh, topic that we often see, I'm the digital tech uh, soft investment team, we invest in software and internet companies, is freelancers uh, that worked on your software and that you didn't have a real contract with. So per idea, it's not your uh, intellectual property is if the freelance has developed it and it's not clear uh, that it's a part of the company. So there's can do a contract. You can also heal it, um, but it's important that you have an eye on it and that you, um, if possible, do everything before the first financing round. One, uh, number three, uh, more money is not always better. That's something I just wanted to put here because recently the financing rounds got larger and larger. But there is uh, often in the seed stage when the product is not really developed, when you do not have a real idea on how to bring the product to the market, which marketing channels or sales channels to use efficiently, uh, then it might not even help you to get more money um, in a financing round because you will not uh, invested efficiently. Uh, there's a lot of uh, trials going on. The product might develop in a different direction. So just make sure that you really have a clear idea on how to spend the money and just not, not just per idea raise more money than you need because, of course, the dilution is higher if you raise more money. And so um, for you as a founder, it might also be helpful to split a larger amount into two to first prove a few hypo hypotheses, go to market, and develop the product, and then raise a larger financing round. Okay, so um, the next four topics, corporate governance, uh, that's a sh very short topic. Um, just, uh, yeah, of course, it has to be a GmbH in Germany on UG. Um, and you should also be sure that yeah, you do not have any structures that, that are very uncommon. For example, in Germany, there's something like a stille Beteiligung, which is then important to heal before the first financing round. Um, or if you have uh, one UG for the two founders, it's very difficult uh, for venture capitalists to invest. That's a whole separate topic. If you have any questions to that, I can go into detail, but would leave it out here. Um, so that's a small point. Very important point. Recently, I'm, I've talked to, to a founder um, that had a business angel that was not really used to venture capital. Um, and before the founder went into the seed financing round, which is now uh, the advice the business angel gave the founder was really not helpful uh, for, for the financing round. The, the, the idea of evaluation was far too high um, of the investment that, uh, that the, the business angel um, press pressured the founder to to get uh, it was far too high uh, mistakes have been made before um, whom to approach how to approach investors and there there are a lot of advisors out there that of course uh, would like to help startups or founders but may not have the experience so after that experience my experience recently with the financing round it's not through yet. Uh, I put that point here as a new point, a question, the advice you get and the advisors, just double check with other founders um, how they have done it, especially if you're in Berlin. Um, it's easy or easier than if you are somewhere 
uh, not in a startup hub to, to just talk to other founders that raised financing rounds that have an idea on how to approach a financing round, which valuations um, are reasonable, which are unreasonable. Um, so that's an advice I, I, I want to give you. And that actually already transfers to the sixth point, the preparation of fundraising. Um, it's a lot of work. And if you're like starting a company, usually when uh, founders come to us, there are two, three founders, one or two working students and maybe one full-time employee. So very limited resource, very small team and fundraising comes on top of everything else uh, that you do. So it's uh, an advice that I want to give you just to prepare what you can prepare before you actually uh, start fundraising. What does it mean? Uh, gather all the um, documents that, all the legal documents, market research you've done before you founded the company or during the process. Um, gather um, competitive, like the competitors' analysis, um, and so on. Financial planning, of course, you have to prepare it. Um, but so in case you start fundraising, if an investor asks for for a data room, that you do not start to do it when the question comes because it will come but that you can just uh, hand it over uh, with almost all documentation, hopefully, that is needed. Also, again, you can ask other founders what is needed. And we can also give you guidelines um, if you start our fundraising process. Usually, it's more or less the same for every investor. There's maybe a deviation of 5% of content that one might want to see that another one does not want to see another investor. So that's another advice because it's also a very good impression um, if you start fundraising, if someone asks for the data room, that you ju can just send it over without uh, yeah, further delays and it will help you in the speed of the process as well. I've gathered here a few, um, a few headlines from newspapers that show huge financing rounds in the seed stage. Just wanted to point out uh, again that that's not normal. Um, if you are start a company and you see all those headlines, it might lead you into wrong direction that are exceptional financing rounds. That's why everyone writes about them. And the yeah, the gross average of financing rounds is of course much smaller. And uh, so just that you have an like an idea, it's not uh, it's not an, uh, a mistake if you just raise one or two million in seed financing round. That's completely fine. And last but not least, I usually start my uh, presentations with that, but here I decided to uh, put it to the end. Um, we are to, so today in a program where it is, is a lot about venture capital, about financing, about startups, scaling startups, but not every business model needs venture capital. That's important. Uh, I always want to point that out. There are a lot of business models that work perfectly fine without venture capital. Um, and it's, I think it's a cool way if you can uh, build your own business without external financing uh, and you do not have to uh, and you don't have to give away equity you do not have to give away uh, autonomy uh, so if you have the possibility to raise uh, to start a company without venture capital that's definitely a cool way but especially for those start for those companies that need a lot of product development before you can get to the first revenue of course you need to get external money because otherwise it's very difficult to just develop the product to get the first revenue to get positive cash flow and to further develop the product so um yeah that's it actually um a bit of cross promotion um at high tech Gründer form we have an open pitch feedback session so if you are a founder you want to test your pitch uh, you can register through Meetup and you will get one-on-one -on -one feedback with one of our investment managers. That's first cross-promotion. Second, we have a pretty cool YouTube channel, I believe, where colleagues and me as well post um, content throughout the investment process, financing rounds, uh, contracts, uh, the shareholders agreements, and so on. So I, I can really recommend it um, if you speak German. Unfortunately, it's mostly in German, I believe, but then just check out our YouTube channel. That's my contact details. If you are a founder and you seek for the first seed financing round, just reach out. The contact details are also on our website as well if you do not manage to write them down or, or forget them. And on the right is my portfolio. Um, that's it. Questions. I see two questions I can answer. Um, and if you have 
further questions, happy to um, answer them as well. So the first question comes from Ali. Do you recommend, can you recommend a book on financial planning? I do, do not know if there are any books. I, no, I, I can't. I no no idea. Um, I think what is helpful, there are resources out there like financial plans that you can use. I think from point nine, there's one for software service startups that is free for use. And it's an Excel model that uh, is very well structured. So I can recommend that. And most probably there are a lot of a lot more resources out there. So maybe that would be a recommendation. Just check out what's out there. And uh, if it's possible, do not build something from the very scratch because a lot of people have done financial plans and you might find a resource that you can use. Second, can you share your presentation material with us? I don't know how it works for start for Startup Night, but you can reach out on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I can send the presentation to you. Uh, maybe there's a systematic approach to sharing the presentation, but I don't know about it. So just reach out on LinkedIn. Um, next one. Can you repeat your rule of thumbs on until when should founders still own 50% of the company's equity? In a perfect world, after till after the Series A, that's what we aim for. So there's a pre-seed financing round often on equity free program, business angels. Then there's a seed round, which we, where we participate in. And then there's a series A round and the per idea. And that's what our data shows us. We've done 630 investments. So we have a lot of data. We see that that helps company performance if founders have over 50 operational founders have over 50% in equity. Um, after the Series A round. Sorry, I couldn't understand the point about the point about the problem of two founders in the UG as a company structure. So it's not the and uh, that sounds to, that seems or sounds to be the most default way to build a company in Germany. Like it's not the most common way. Usually, if you uh, choose a UG structure for uh, the corporate, uh, like as a founder, then there's one UG per founder. That's the usual way, two founders per UG. It's actually something that is very venture capital specific. It's just much more difficult to uh, execute vesting rules um, that you have to sign when you get a venture capital investment. In that case, if two founders are in one UG, because yeah, then you have to kind of go into the structure of the UG to ex execute those rules. And I just believe like a UG costs, I think, uh, yeah, it's a thousand euro, one euro, right? And then a bit of um, setup cost. So if you want to have a clear structure, just the one UG per founder. Always start as in GmbH, not UG. I, I, I cannot fully support that. Um, I don't, you can do it. You can start as a company, as a UG, and then go to GmbH. Especially like at the very beginning, I often see UGs and um, latest when the first financing round comes in, usually it's uh, it's going to be a GmbH. Okay, so, okay, thank you. Yeah, that, that, that is something you can do. Like I, maybe to make it clear, um, Livia, I meant, of course, the founders UGs. So often founders uh, found UGs and those UGs are then uh, shareholders of the actual company, the GmbH, because of tax reasons after a large exit. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so that's what I meant. Um, Omid, what should be the best evaluation of the startup? <laughs> How should you calculate so first, what should be the best evaluation of the startup? That's, of course, a very difficult question that is very difficult to answer. That's a completely different uh, presentation. And especially in the seed stage, of course, there's there are no hard facts. I think what, what is always helpful is traction, is a good founding team, is a growing market, is possible not that much of a competition and a product innovation. Um, so that's already a good start. And then there are huge premiums if it's a serial founding team, if it's a very good technology that is developed, it has been developed, if it's a 
yeah, strong product, uh, good customer feedback, all premiums. Um, and what the number in the end is, is really difficult to say. Yeah, unfortunately. How should you calculate how much you want to have funded? So a few data points on that. Usually we, we advise to, uh, if you raise a financing round, to have at least 18 months of run rate because then you can show a real, real value creation and do not have to go fundraising after you've closed the first financing round again. So that's one point. Second point is you should know your sales cycles. So if you have 18 months sales cycles, you should also have that in your in your like um, definition of how much you want to raise because then you know you need a very long time to show increased revenues. Um, then, of course, how much money you need for the product development to get to a product stage that you really can commercialize. And usually in the seed financing round, the money should... Uh, be enough for a version of your product that you can commercialize and then first tests of marketing and sales channels. And then the Series A financing round usually is to scale the channels that you found efficient um, for, with the seed investment. So that's a few data points. And I think the usual seed valuation that we see is bit, or seed uh, funding that we see is between 600,000 to 2 million euros. What kind of traction would you expect from Joe? What kind of traction would you expect from a fintech that needs seed money to prepare their platform, but which has large potential? A bit of a chicken and egg story, of course. Yes, true. Um, fintechs often have uh, huge requirements for regulation. Um, platform business as well, chicken and egg problem, as you've said. I think it's Diffi very difficult to answer. Um, if you have a good, if you have a startup, uh, just send me um, a LinkedIn message and we can go into more detail uh, then. But um, at least what, like we just, actually we've just invested into Sidecaps, which is a fintech platform. I don't know if you've seen the announcement and what they had, they had the, everything set up uh, for like all the regulation set up with partners or on their own to to scale and there our seed money goes into building the final product and to integrating all the partners that are necessary for regulation and then scale so they did not have major traction yet but they've already acquired very many partners they have a clear roadmap on technology and have already developed a huge a part of that technology and they had a clear go to market strategy so and that that was um, almost no traction, but on the other topics, they were already had a very good strategic strategic um, roadmap and partners to execute that with. What was the valuation? Of course, I can't say that. Yeah. Okay. Um, if there are no further questions, as I said, um, if you want the presentation, uh, just reach out on LinkedIn because I do not know if the presentation is shared. And if you are a startup that if you want to tr train your pitch, just uh, and just reach out to us as high tech gründer from the easiest ways our open pitch feedback session. I would strongly recommend that. Um, and other than that, uh, was fun talking to you. Unfortunately, without feedback because you only can chat. But we will most probably see each other sooner or later again. So have a nice end of uh, startup night and uh, all the best for your ideas and uh, the next steps for your companies.